friends, are you ready for a story? The name of our story today is We Are Water Protectors, written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body. As it nourishes us here on Mother Earth, water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together. To stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, the winged ones, the crawling ones, the four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes, the earth. We are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. In the Ojibwa culture, women are the protectors of the water and men are the protectors of the fire. Perhaps it is for that reason that I felt compelled to speak for the water through this story. Humans have been mistreating Mother Earth for millennia, and indigenous people have long acted as stewards of the planet, giving a voice to our silent homes. There is a prophecy that speaks of two roads. One road is a natural path. It leads to global peace and unity that embraces the sacred relationship between humanity and all living things. On this path, all orders of creation, mineral, plant, animal, and human, are relatives deserving of respect and care. We are instructed to use our voices to speak for those who have not been given a voice. On this path, there is no black snake. The earth is not damaged and the grass grows lush and green. This prophecy known as the seven fires prophecy says that if humans choose the natural path, then we will proceed toward peace and unity and a healthy Mother Earth. The other road is described as a hard surfaced highway where everything moves faster and faster at an unimaginable speed. On this path, humans embrace technological advancement with little regard for Mother Earth. Many native nations believe this path is symbolized by the oil pipelines the black snakes that crisscross our lands, bringing destruction and harm. 
This path leads to a damaged earth. The prophecy is coming to life right before our eyes. This book was created as I became increasingly aware of the many tribal nations that are fighting oil pipelines from crossing their tribal lands and waterways. In April 2016, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe stood up against the titans of industry to protect their region's water in sacred burial grounds from one of these oil pipelines, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Although the tribes and residents are often told that these pipelines are safe, there are countless oil leaks every year across the world. These leaks cause tremendous damage and destruction to plants, wildlife, and water. What started out as a camp made up of a few tribal members near the Cannonball River in Fort Yates, North Dakota, would eventually grow into a movement that would bring together more than 500 indigenous nations from all over the world to stand for clean water. Seeing reports of the protests had a profound effect on me. I am a citizen of the Turtle Mountain Band of Ojibwa, a tribe also located in North Dakota. While other members of the tribe traveled to Standing Rock to lend their support, traveling to North Dakota from my home in Maryland wasn't possible for me at the time. But I knew what was, using my voice to tell a story a story to honor the Standing Rock water protectors and share this historical movement with the world. Sadly, despite the fierce protests, construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline moved forward. With no assurances to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe that the pipeline wouldn't leak and that their water sources would be safe from contamination. Unfortunately, there were leaks in the Dakota Access Pipeline before construction was even complete. Like the Standing Rock Sioux, many tribes and their allies continue to fight pipelines on a daily basis. This is not just a Native American issue. This is a humanitarian issue. It is time that we all become stewards of our planet so we can protect it for our children and our children's children. Water affects and connects us all. We must fight to protect it. I have hope that the next generation, you, will continue to see the importance of preserving our precious planet by pledging to be a water protector with me. And that is a little letter from the author of the story. So friends, you're probably little and watching this and thinking, well, what can I do to protect the water? Well, one thing you can do is you can always make sure not to use too much of it. Use what you need and shut the water off when you're not using it. And that goes for lights and electricity as well. We want to try to conserve our resources. And you can remind mommy and daddy to do the same. If you have other ideas for protecting the water, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Be sure to let me know Thank you for joining our story today. Remember to like and subscribe so you find out about our next story time. Thank you.